make sure you've got this tool here selected, the selection tool. You might notice that the selection tool has a black arrow. On a Windows machine it's shown as a white arrow. And just surrounding that arrow are two very light grey boxes. These are the snap boxes and the selection boxes. When I move near an object that I can snap onto, like that one, Vectorworks will highlight the object. Now this is snapping, it is not selecting. The inner box is the selection box. And you'll notice that my cursor changes shape when the inner box gets near an object. This is called the move cursor. It allows me to click on an object and drag it around. I'll just undo that. When I go near the corner of an object, it changes to a cross. Top left, to the center, even to the center of my object. This is a very quick and very accurate way of moving your information the snap cursor. If I try to use the move cursor and try to line these two corners up, it can be quite tricky. Yeah, I'm almost there. But if I use the snap cursor, snap, hold down the mouse button, snap to the other object, let go of the mouse button, it is perfect. Even if I zoom in, you'll see that that is a perfect joint. Let's put that back where it belongs, back to there. So we have our move cursor, we have our snap cursor, and if I select an object and move back onto one of those blue handles, I have the interactive scaling cursor. This allows me to stretch an object. You notice the object is now stretched. Let's put that back, and I can stretch it back again as well. If your object is selected, then this cursor will appear when you move right onto the handle. But if you move away from the handle slightly, you'll see that you can get your snap cursor, reshape cursor, snap cursor, move cursor, and it happens all in a very short or in a very small area. So be careful of those. The cursor will change shape as you're able to do things. These cursor shapes are connected to these modes here. If I disable this interactive scaling mode, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, let's do that. You notice my blue handles have gone. And now I won't be able to interactively scale any object, not anything at all. So I find that one can be quite a challenge, and I tend to use this mode. If I choose the third mode, then what I get is the ability to select multiple objects and rescale all of them. Which I find can be a bit of a challenge again. So I tend to use this middle one here because then if I select multiple objects, I can't accidentally rescale them. If I select one, I can. So that is a really useful one for me. If I have multiple objects that are in the same place, I sometimes see a little asterisk next to my cursor. There it is there by the word top. This is the indicator that there are coincident objects, that is, two objects that touch. If I right click, I can select coincident objects. Now this brings up a dialog box that says, hey, did you know you can hold down the J key to do this? So let's try the J key. Back to that corner, hold down the J key, click, let go of the J key, and you can see I've got one rectangle or I've got another rectangle. And I can also use my up, down arrow keys for that. So those are my up, down arrows for the cursor control, and you can see you can select multiple objects. On larger projects, this technique of selecting coincident objects is really useful. And it allows you to select the object that is at the back, because it shows the stacking order. The other technique is holding down the B key, B for Bravo. And you can see it makes your objects see-through. So let's just draw a rectangle on top of all of those. Now you notice we can't see any of our rectangles. Back to my selection tool, hold down the B key, and now I can select individual rectangles that are hiding underneath of that white square. 